The hill farmer has to contend with poor land and a hard climate. Few hill grazings are capable of providing enough feed for ewe lambs through their first winter. The tradition has been to bring the lambs off the hill in the autumn for sending away on tack to winter under the more favourable conditions of a lowland farm. The ewe lambs to enter the flock for the next year, called ewe hogs, must be wintered well to develop the body frame and breeding potential they will need. Their lifetime performance depends upon how they are treated during their first winter. If the farmer has a good lambing percentage and enough lambs to choose from, he should be selective in the ewe hogs he keeps. Lambs sent away on tack should be worm free, sound and healthy. In the past, satisfactory wintering of ewe hogs always meant sending them away on tack. However, now on the lowlands, not only are more acres down to corn, but the dairy farmer is becoming more reluctant to lose his early spring grass to another man's sheep. Good reliable tack is becoming harder to find and more expensive. During the course of the winter, the hill farmer often has to make two or three visits, usually with a long journey, to follow the general condition of his flock, as the lowland farmer is not necessarily skilled in sheep farming. Wintering away on tack, however, is still the best system, if it can be found at the right price. But most hill farmers are being forced to break with tradition and to winter ewe hogs at home. There are three main ways of doing this. The first, of course, is to leave the sheep to winter out on the hill. This means that the farmer is using his own land and the hogs can become acclimatized and develop naturally. But working out in bad weather is a hard task. There has to be supplementary feeding because there is insufficient grazing through the winter. One North Country system is to feed both ewes and hogs four to eight ounces of beet pulp nuts and one to one and a half pounds of the best old land meadow hay for six weeks before lambing. The hay made on the farm is given during periods of hard weather on new, clean ground each day. Out on the hill, where the ewe hogs cannot be kept separate from the rams, they should be breeked. The direct cost of wintering on the hill is small, and with a high standard of shepherding, it can be done satisfactorily on a few farms. But for the majority, it is not practical, because it results in poor growth and a high mortality. There is also a reduction in the wool clip and an increase in barrenness. The second alternative is to winter the ewe hogs on the better land at the foot of the mountain, near the homestead, known as in land, or in Wales as Frith. Sheep need some shelter from driving wind and rain, even if it is only a stone wall. Being near the homestead makes for easier shepherding in the winter. From January, there will be little or no growth of herbage, and the intensity of stocking depends on how much supplementary feed is given and on the degree of poaching of the land. If good quality homegrown hay is available, it may be possible to do without concentrates all through the winter, although minerals should be given separately to compensate for deficiency in the herbage. In by land is normally needed at tupping time and again at lambing time. So its use by ewe hogs may limit the size of the flock. 
Provided there is enough in by land, and the farmer is prepared to forego its use for other purposes, this system of wintering is economical and can bring the ewe hogs through to the spring in good condition. The third alternative is to winter at home in a shed. Ewe hogs can be put into the shed when the winter weather begins and taken back to the hills in spring. Large numbers can be looked after by one man sheltered from the weather with complete control of feeding and management. If the weather is fine, the sheep can be run outside and brought back later in the day. A shed should be conveniently sited near the farm with an access road. Sheds are only an alternative provided the cost of the building can be economically justified. An elaborate structure is not required, for the object is simply to keep the sheep away from driving wind and rain or snow. In designing a shed, the first essential is to have adequate ventilation above the heads of the sheep. An inexpensive example of good ventilation is to have a large airspace over the door at each end and open windows. Open space boarding gives such ventilation without drafts. An open ridge prevents accumulation of warm air in the roof. Circular roofs are more difficult to ventilate and need care in design to avoid condensation. As well as a gap at the ridge, there can be ventilation at each end of the building. Every shed should have windows or roof lights and electric lighting if a supply is available. The second essential point of shed design is a good floor. The expense of slatted floors has been found to be justified in that they reduce foot troubles and make unnecessary the provision of bedding. Precast concrete or brickwork piers carry timber floor joists. Slats are set in eight feet by four feet sections which can be removed for mucking out. The space beneath should not be less than 18 inches and mucking out will be needed only once every year. The top of the joists can be splayed to avoid holding muck and the slats shaped and spaced apart by 5 eighths of an inch. However, plain slats can be used. Softwood is best as it is inexpensive and tends not to splinter. When mucking out, the slatted floor sections can be lifted away and a tractor driven in. For winter housing, it may be possible to adapt cheaply an existing building, such as an implement shed. The open side has been only partly covered to ensure plenty of air. The feeders can be homemade. They should be easy to fill and the angle of the feeder chosen to avoid seeds from the hay falling into the eyes of the sheep. For reasons of economy, many sheep sheds are built to serve other purposes. Some have an extension which can be used for cattle. But successful wintering in a shed depends upon management. A shepherd knows that sheep will more easily use a ramp which has slats running crossways. A hinged flap allows the doors to close. A canopy over the sliding gear gives protection from the weather. Each animal needs five to six square feet of floor space and 50 to 60 lambs in each pen seems to afford the best result. Pens can be constructed very simply from cheap farm timber. Gates can be made in a similar way. Once in the shed, well housed and ventilated, a prime need of sheep is for plenty of cold running water, preferably mountain water. An overflow pipe should be fitted to avoid rotting the wooden slats. Equally important is feeding. To provide sufficient nutrients, the diet can be supplemented with cereal based concentrates. Beet pulp nuts and proprietary cubes are also commonly used. 
concentrates are usually put into the troughs before setting out the hay. Some farmers are able to use farm-grown cereals, such as oats and barley. The feed should be evenly spread in the trough, but wastage is not always easy to avoid. A steady but not excessive gain in weight comes from feeding about half a pound of concentrates daily to supplement a ration of about one and a half pounds of hay, depending upon the size of the hog. There should be available vitaminized minerals, particularly those which are high in calcium and phosphorus. The food store is often placed at the side to avoid using shed space which can be allotted to sheep. Only good quality hay should be used. If the hay has a crude protein content of 10% or more, hardly any concentrates will be necessary. There should be at least 12 inches of trough space per animal. Additional uses can often be found for a wintering shed to help justify the cost of the building. When the sheep return to the hill in the spring, a 60 to 70 pound hog should ideally have gained 5 to 8 pounds during the winter, so that it is in thriving condition, neither too lean nor too fat. Factors influencing the choice of a method of wintering new hogs are cost, management and the nature of each farm and its climate. A farmer must weigh up the various methods and choose the one which suits him best. Thank you.